Hey, what's up? I'm Basil Barrington. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Behind a Groove podcast. Today, we continue our conversation, part two, with Jay from Just Techniques. We talk about techniques and other turntables as well. So without further ado, let's check it out. I don't, this may be, so everyone says, not everyone, but a lot of people say that the Technique 1200 is the industry standard. I don't, I, I, I just do not understand that statement. Um, I understand that the technique is iconic, yeah. right? Yeah, I'll say it. But the industry standard, I mean, that sounds, to me, when you say that, it's just like, okay, Facebook is the industry standard. Or, you know, yeah. Tesla is the industry <laughs> yeah. standard, you know? Everything they the side. Yeah. It's like, yeah. how can you be the industry standard when you're not even, a, when you, you don't even make analog turntables anymore? Exactly, exactly. It's, it's one of those things. Unfortunately, now, I still class, if you were off the record with it, I'd say, to myself, I'd say, it's the only turntable that's ever been released that does everything that yes. an old school mixing DJ will ever want it to do. Mm-hmm. No, there's no bells and whistles. You wouldn't need any more than plus or minus 8% pitch. That's the truth. Yeah. You don't need to have it start and then stop it ultra quick. If you wanted to have something, you want about a scratch on it, you could put um, plastic sheeting underneath your slip mat. You can use right. speed mats from Technics. You could buy Dr. Suzuki slip mats. There's lots you can do to make your experience using these iconic old turntables a million times better. Lots mm-hmm. you can do. You said something really cool just now, and I think um, a lot of DJs who come from turntables do this. We always put a plastic sheet underneath (laughs) our felt, right? It makes it a little slipperier if you're um, a DJ. DJ. Right, exactly. So check this out, right? So, uh, you know, you hear the word or the company thrown around a lot, handpin, right? Um, I I know what that is. Uh, Obviously, you know what that is. Just explain to the people like those who may not know exactly what is um, hand pin and why are they so important? Right. So hand pin. Now it's a bit of a swear word where I am because to be honest, <laughs> there are so many people that are so many different suppliers, brands, which use this firm. So basically for anyone that's watching our hand pin, they basically are the heart and soul of just about every modern day turntable that you can buy on the market. So anything from Pioneer, I think the only one that actually isn't is Denon. Denon's VL12 turntable. I'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. But um, yeah, the Pioneer turntable, the Stanton turntable, DJ Tech, Epsilon, uh, the old Cam turntables, the DDX range. Um, just about every big manufacturer that you know that's made turntables and you'll notice that there's certain similarities to these decks, including Gemini as well. You'll notice the, the tone arms look very similar. That's because they are the same turntable, the same mm-hmm. tone arm. The motors all feel very similar because they all use the same motor, mm-hmm. the same pitch control. There's even the same button assemblies on the majority of them. So what basically happens is these big brands, they decide that they want to build a turntable. All they actually do, they don't build the turntable. All they do is they design the way it looks. That's and it. then they contact Hampin and they'll say, right, we're such and such from such and such. We want a turntable. Um, this is what we want to look like. We want your spec. I think it's a DJ, it was a DDJT 5500 or something like that, that, that Hampin are renowned for using. They've had this yeah, the 5500. Exactly, exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. So that turntable is what they model all of these turntables off of. As far as I'm aware, that is still the case. So they all have the same motor, the same pitch. The what time is the Reloop, for an example, the RP7000 Mark II, and the older RP7000, the original. Um, they have both have, of those. Exactly. They've mm-hmm. got the Pioneer pitch control. The Mark II has the Pioneer PLX1000 arm tube. So that's why it looks exactly the same. They all have the Stanton base assemblies on the tone arms with the very loose bearings and pivots that you get on a lot of these turntables mm-hmm. the same motor uh, same start and stop assemblies pretty much underneath right there isn't really a great deal of difference between them uh switchable line outputs on most of them as well line to phono outputs removable ground cable mm-hmm. removable ic kettle connection at the back right. so they are pretty much the heart and soul of dj turntables and have been for a very 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 long time but people 
don't customers don't realize this you see i know this from my background of working in dj shops but it wasn't until it wasn't really until i started going out on my own and do what i do now to really realize by taking things apart by looking at technical specs and just putting two and two together and using a bit of common sense that these turntables are exactly the same the components are the same right. so you could be paying a premium price for say the pioneer yeah. when really what you should be doing is buying is buying the reloop or even mm -hmm. buying a, an epsilon turntable mm -hmm. who are dj tech as well mm -hmm. so to give you another idea epsilon do a turntable i think it's a dd a djt 1300 i believe it's called don't quote me on that but i think that's what it's called um it looks horrible it looks it's more of based around a gemini and an old cam ddx style shell quite rounded with um, lines on the platter not my cup of tea but it's a, it's a, it does the job but the, my point is you could put the pioneer turntable right here and then you put the epsilon turntable here and you'll go it's a completely different turntable yeah but if you look at the turntable the arms the same but then the internals of the turntable are the same as the pioneer mm -hmm. so you're paying that premium price when you can actually buy a single epsilon turntable we do them over here we discontinued them now but they are 140 pounds each oh, so really? for the price of under one turntable by pioneer you wait a minute it. the epsilon was the same as the plx 1000 yes yes wow and it was like basically 200 dollars american you've got it yep wow anyone that watches this can go out and buy one right now i have a lot of customers that contact me and say to me what would you recommend i don't have a lot of money i'm not too bothered about having perfect mixing it's only going to be for home use the odd bit of recording bit of fun in my bedroom you know and i always say that i said if you can get them buy them because mm. they're fantastic they're high talk they're exactly the same as the pioneer high talk same pitch control stance and tone arm mm. I mean, what more do you want if you haven't got a lot of money to spend? Everyone used to go on about the Stanton STR 8150s or the straight 150s. Then there was the S band version with the S arm. Right. And they're fantastic turntables. Mm -hmm. But people, I tend to find that people only defend these brands because they own them. If they've only ever used Stanton and you say, oh, you should get a pair of Technics, they'll start saying, don't need them, they're fantastic. And then they'll recommend the Stanton to all of their friends. And that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what happens with these big DJs when you see them using equipment. Everyone sees them using the equipment mm -hmm. and they automatically presume that that person's using it. It's got to be fantastic. Not that they haven't been given it or that they're being sponsored by these people. Hence why half the time you see people wearing Pioneer headphones, Pioneer mixer, right. Pioneer days, Pioneer turntables. This exactly. is how it goes. Mm -hmm. So the reality is you can spend £140 on a turntable that does exactly the same performance-wise as a Pioneer, but it won't look as pretty. So it's either you have to go between the two and sum it up and decide if you can afford to spend the money because you want to spend the money and buy something that looks nice, then fine. You know, go for what you feel is the nicest one. But you don't, you, I mean, gone are the days now of buying things just because of the name. And that hit home with me probably about four years ago when mm. I took apart a Stanton turntable. You know, and you look at the Stanton, you look Which at the one, the 150, the ST150? Yeah, the 150. Yeah, take that apart and you take apart Pioneer. Mm -hmm. There might be slight differences, but I can guarantee you now a lot of the components are exactly the same. Wow. I'm interested in seeing, I, I know like with the new handpin turntables, like especially with the um, PLX 1000 and also the RP 7000 uh, yep. MK2, yep. I understand that there's dampening in the tone arm. I like to yep. see that split apart and see what that really looks like. You know, the other thing yep. is if you still own your um, MK2s, your, um, your 7000s, if you lift up the plate, you should be able to see the the handpin 5500 like um stamp Top of the yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so here's it so if that's the case with handpin let's say you know me and some friends we have the resources to say hey you know what let's just put out our own turntable <laughs> yeah we yeah. can go directly to handpin and say listen give us like a hundred turntables we want it exactly like the plx 1000 but yep. we want our logo on it and they would they would produce that 
In theory, yes. I mean, you need to spend uh, you need to spend thousands, but yeah. yes. I mean, in theory, you could get your design made. You need to do the CAD drawings and work it around. So, what you could actually do is, I suppose, in reality, you could you could have a reloop. You could sit it in front of you and go right. Okay, we know the internals of what they are. If you want to sell them exactly the same, you could copy that person's brand. Right. Go to Hampin, knock on their door. Can yeah, you can knock on their door, send them an email, and say, hey, I mm -hmm. want I'm such and such from like me. Jay from Just Technics, I want to make my own version of this turntable. Right. It's not fully <laughs> affiliated with Technics, but this is my logo. So you can stick my logo down the side of the turntable. Mm -hmm. That's mine. I want to buy 10,000 units. Yeah. I want to buy 10,000 units. We'll do it on a basis of I'll give you X amount up front, and every time we sell one, we'll take a cut out of it from the suppliers. Mm. There's a lot of people, what you don't realize in some of these shops is the bigger brands, the, the markup for their items is not very big. It yeah. really is. Right. So what you'll find is a lot of retail, especially if you go into somewhere and you want to buy a turntable, most of the big DJ shops will push you away from a lot of the big branded things, like the big name things, like Pioneer, for an example, because they mm -hmm. know that the, the markup isn't much. I mean, when I used to work for DJ shops, markup Pioneer gear was you were lucky. Even if I wanted to buy something myself on staff discount, you're lucky to get 2%, 2% out of anything. So a lot of these big suppliers, you can imagine, if I can't even get 2%, what are these guys getting when they actually sell it? Right. Not a lot. So mm -hmm. if they've got something else by a lower quality brand, you know, that you might not have heard of, their markup's going to be pretty big because it's something you've never heard of before. And usually mm -hmm. that is the case. Mm -hmm. So they've probably done exactly the same. All these people you never would have heard of before, like Epsilon. If people have never heard of Epsilon, you're going to walk into a shop and go, I don't want that. Right. Oh, well, that's, cool. that's like you know, a Gemini. I to, you know, I want to go for a Pioneer. I don't want a bloody can turntable. You know what I mean? You don't. You just don't do that. And yeah. I could appreciate that because people used to do it all the time. We used to walk into shops and they go, "There's the Relu. There's the Newmark TT250 USB turntable." Yeah. And in reality, mixing on the TT250 was actually better and easier than mixing on the Relu. People won't tell you that, but it's true. It, you haven't got. The it's a hand pin turntable. The Newmark. The new mark, the, the new mark TT250 was no. Okay. But what I'm saying is the way it's been designed, the pitch control works differently. So mm -hmm. it is a much easier turntable to use. It's classed as a budget turntable. Mm -hmm. So even things like the PLX500, that's not the same. That's slightly different. And I've I've actually listened to people mixing on PLX500s next to PLX1000s, and PLX500s, even though they haven't got as much. Um, Talk on the platter or the motor mm -hmm. mixing on the 500 is actually easier than mixing on the 1000 because it's a completely different turntable. Wow! So, this is where people they because they don't know what they're looking at mm -hmm. and they just immediately think that one's 300 pounds more than what this one here is, mm -hmm. it's got to be better. You know, they class that as the industry standard. So, like we were saying before about industry standard. Mm -hmm. Now, Technics would obviously they were the industry standard. I have yeah, to say they that. were. They were the industry standard yeah. because there wasn't any other turntable really that competed. I mean, Vestax did it. They they competed. They were the main competitor to Technics. Yeah. They were the only people really that came out and decided to go. Do you know what? This is what we're going to do. We're mm -hmm. going to design something that's going to whoop them. It's going to do more than what Technics done, and we're going to put the joystick on it. We're going to have pitch bending on our turn. <laughs> right. you know, in reality, now it was horrible. I mean, the pitch bending on the old on the old Vestax was terrible. But as a battle turntable for turntablists, like scratch DJs, mm -hmm. it had so many features. You had the ultra pitch as well. That was fantastic. Um, you know, it was a nice deck. But obviously, they lost as well. They went bust. They went bankrupt. Vestax went bankrupt. Um, you know, and there was nobody else on the scene. Everybody else on the scene. All use these super OEM components. Newmark probably Newmark are probably the only one that I know that haven't really done that because the firm that owns Newmark is in Music Group. So in yeah. Music Group, they own quite a few. You know, it's quite a few brands which they go under. Like they Apple own Apple. Denon as well. Exactly, they're all they're all the same company. Yeah. So Denon as well. That's also in Music Group and yeah. Rain. And Rain are huge. I mean, Rain are, If you speak to any scratch DJ and say what mixer have you got? Nine mm -hmm. times out of ten, they've either got an old Vestax mixer with an inner fader inside it, mm -hmm. or they've got a rain yeah. because the rain mixers are bomb proof. Yeah. I mean, magnetic rail glide fighter, they're excellent. 
So that was that. And they, they're also owned by the same company. So the turntables that Newmark have been putting out, I mean, the NTX 1000 was their, um, their, their flagship version. They moved on from the TT. You remember the TTX turntables? I remember, remember that. You know, I was going to say that, you know, when you were talking about the, um, the Vastec, you know, when it yeah. came out as a competitor to um, the Technique TTX, back in the day. In America, you, it was rare that you saw that turntable, the Vastec. Yeah. You always, yeah. I mean, you always saw the Techniques and a rain mixer in the dj booth exactly you know you exactly. always saw that the rain they they just had like some warmth to their components to their systems it was a yeah. very cool like um it was a they they just made really good mixers let me ask you something you know and and, and music brand is actually very large i was hoping that they would buy uh pioneer you know so um <laughs> yeah. that would be pretty cool you were talking about the now discontinued Denon, what's that, the VL12? The VL12 Prime, yes. Why did they discontinue that? And was that really a great turntable? What a shame. That's all I'm going to say. My VL12 is still sitting on my racking just behind my camera, honestly. It, mm. Out of every single modern turntable I've ever used, the VL12 Prime is my favorite. Is my favorite. Um, to mix on, it is the, I'll still say that, I said it in the video before, it is the best modern day turntable for beat mixing DJs. Mm. It really is. It, the way the motor works, there's no cogging on the platter, there's no jumps. It is silky smooth to mix on. There are just so many letdowns with this turntable. <laughs> Well, so it's a great turntable, but there are like so many letdowns. So do you think the, the, the letdowns were maybe the reason why they discontinued? Or are they coming out with a better version? I doubt it. If they do, I tell you now, if they do, I will buy a pair. I will really? definitely buy a pair. The, mm. biggest, the biggest problem with the VL12, and I'll be this is the thing again, the, the tone arm for a start, the tone arm is horrific. Really? It's basically a Gemini turntable. That's totally. what I heard. I heard it felt like a Gemini um, tone on. Gemini arm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they won't tell you that, and they make out that they've redesigned it from the ground up, and it's their own design for that. Mm -hmm. It's a Gemini arm. I've seen mm -hmm. I've seen enough Gemini PX1000 turntables in my time, <laughs> and PAs and all that stuff right. to know <laughs> what you know to know what what tone arm it is. It's light as a feather. It feels like plastic. It's very wobbly has the same horrible mechanism that you have that little plastic lock and the whole thing lifts. It is a Gemini tone arm. Right, it's a right, simple right. Arm. So the arm's the number one thing that lets that down. You know, like on a, on a Technics turntable, you can tap the plinth on the top, on the base right. of the deck, mm -hmm. and you can just about lightly hear that through your speakers. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the Denon turntable, you've only got to lightly tap it, and it's loud, really, really loud. So there's two, <laughs> there's two problems that cause that. One is the arm, the way the arm has been designed. It's a budget tone. It's a budget turntable arm. Mm -hmm. That's the best way that I put that. Two is the dampening of the turntable. Right. I was about to say the dampening. Mm -hmm. What people won't tell you, you probably don't know this. What people won't tell you is out of all the reviews of all the turntables, modern turntables over the last, I don't know, three years, I'd say, because the best of that, that turntable, the Denon zone, hasn't been out for that long, has it? No, it hasn't. It. So when that was first released, people started to do reviews on the, on the, on the feet and the actual dampening of the base of the turntable because they're under the understanding by the way that Denon and in music have basically said it's the best of the best. It's got these massive feet underneath. Isolation's never going to be a problem ever again. Best isolation in the game and all this. Um, it's the worst turntable. It's the worst one. That turntable was worse than the Mark 7 in terms of feedback and damping. So that was the worst turntable. Let me ask so, you this in terms of yeah. feedback. Is it yep. worse than the Audio Technica 120, AT120? Oh, that was the Technics lookalike, wasn't it? Yeah, because that has it. That I mean, if you tap oh. on it, it just sounds like it has no dampening at all. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just very like, the empty. <laughs> the other question is, why is the uh, if all of this is coming off the same sort of um, assembly line with handpin? Why is it that the Stanton ST150 is so much heavier than everything else? <laughs> With the base inside, they've got a massive lead sheet actually stuck inside the base. 
and that's why it's very heavy. Okay. Just to clarify as well, the Denon VL12 is not a Super OEM turntable, just to let you know as well. That's that was made from the ground up? That's been made from the ground up, so it's not a Super OEM turntable. Mm. It's just because I know what would happen. We probably we wouldn't correct that, and then you'd have nothing but comments on YouTube people going, Jay doesn't know what he's talking about. It's not <laughs> that, but no, just to clarify, the dead mm. VL12 Prime is not a Super OEM turntable. Now, and still- it's not a analog turntable either. Yes, it's not an analog turntable. Okay. Mm. Though the pitch control, like I've said, the slider itself is analog. All of these turntables all have analog sliders right. because they all mount onto a board and mm. they're all controlled by various different chips for the computer that controls. So they are all analog but with digit, they're all digitally controlled. Mm-hmm. Even the original Technics, this may be analog. This is under mm-hmm. the illusion. This may be analog, but the the turntable is digital. The way it's the way it's controlled, you've got control chips in there. Mm-hmm. It's digital. Right. So all everybody that turns around and says, "I want it pure digital," there isn't a single turntable on the market. I'd say that is pure digital. If it turns on and it's controlled by a chip and you switch an LED and it turns things over and you move things that do various different things, they're digital. Yeah. So people are under the illusion that a Technics 1210, 1200, whatever, mm. is an analog turntable. It doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the schematic and you actually see how the turntable works and where the power goes to and how it's transformed and how it works, it's 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 analog to a degree, but it is digitally controlled, and the whole turntable is digital. So no, <laughs> it's a digital you, turntable. You know, it's weird because I um I actually just got my my um pairs of um the uh, Reloop RP seven seven thousand MK twos. I have the MK ones, and I thought, wow, this is a really cool turntable. Uh, yeah. Even though I have the MK twos as well, right? The um right. um the, the techniques. Although, like you said, you're still always messing around with the pitch. So here's, let's do a speed round here. And it's kind of weird doing a speed round with turntables because they, they're kind of all the same, yep. right? So Reloop, okay, so your opinion on the Reloop RP7000 uh, MK2s. Brilliant. I love it. I love that turntable. I'd say for anybody out there that wants the, a nice looking solid built turntable with good audio quality and all round very nice features, doesn't want to go out and buy a more expensive turntable because like I've just said, they're all the same. That turntable is fantastic. The biggest, the biggest game changer on that turntable and what I did with the Mark II, better than the Mark I, was the, was the uh, torque adjustment of the motor. Yeah. For those of us that have obviously been using Techniques or using any of the older direct drive turntables, we're used to touching that platter and having that platter stop. Yeah. A lot of people tend to find it harder mixing with turntables that have a faster or heavier movement on your hand. So having an a, a option to adjust the torque is a big game changer and Reloop really did knock that out of the park. So yes, that, I'd say that's probably my... Go to turntable. I'd recommend that to anybody who wants a better turn. If you're going from a belt drive or a cheap direct drive, that is the turntable you go for. So here's the weird thing because in my, my next turntable is the PLX 1000, a Pioneer PLX 1000. Yeah. That's basically the Pioneer PLX 1000 and also the Reloop RP7000 MK2 are basically the same turntable with the exception of the torque and the yeah. brake, right? And the stand from straight 150 as well. Right, yeah. so... And, but the the, DDX, and the DDX as well by, uh, by Cam when they used to do them. They're all right. the same. All yeah, the same. so it's just like, so I don't understand why Pioneer added an extra $200 to their turntable, the PLX uh, <laughs> 1000, where you can get the Reloop for like, you know, $500. Yep. So um, give me your thoughts on it. I know, again, it's the same turntable, kind of, but what are your thoughts I on the Pioneer it. PLX I 1000? Hate it. Can't mix yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. Horrible turntable. I have so many people that have, have watched my videos, done a video a long time ago on the YouTube, mm-hmm. and I had a pair of M5G Technics, and everyone knows they're a pain to mix on because obviously they also are digitally controlled. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I did a really good deal. I got a pair of PLX 1000s. I thought I'd get them just for home use. I don't mm-hmm. care. Get anything I want. I've got loads right. of turntables at home. And 
yeah, I couldn't mix anything on them. I remember really well because I was standing there mixing. My, my, we just moved flat. We moved into another property, and we had the, the, the two sofas behind my deck stand. And I was standing there mixing, and I'd just literally finished for about an hour, and I couldn't mix one single record together on them without having to constantly move the pitch. And I turned the turntable off, but my, my girlfriend was sitting behind me, and I just looked at her, and she was looking at me, and I said, was it just me, or was that horrible? And she just went, take them back. They're rubbish. Yeah. And I did. I ended up, I ended up uh, getting in contact with somebody that I know, and I said, look, I've got these turntables. I hate them. You'll make profit on them. And I ended up selling them and uh, doing a part exchange for a pair of Mark IIs. And wow. that's exactly what I did. So, no, for anybody that's out there that wants to just purely beat mix, you do not touch the Pioneer PLX 1000. Simple as that. Stanton ST150s, what do you think? Oh, now, see, this is the problem because that's another iconic turntable. I can't <laughs> not that standard, not industry standard, but iconic. No, the, standard, that's the no. big difference. Iconic and industry standard. That is iconic. a big difference. It's yeah. iconic, but I, I still, well, look, let's be honest. It's, it's basically the same turntable as the Relu and the Pioneer. But again, I've always found the straight 150 to be a very hard turntable to mix on. So yeah. it depends on what, on what you want to use your turntable for. If you're going to be listening to records, ripping tracks onto a computer so you can sample them for production, if yeah. you want something, if you need a turntable that's going to have, really high torque that will rip your fingertips off that's the turntable yeah if you need ultra pitch that's the turntable so all of these modern decks are great for it so you will this is exactly what i was saying to you before you'll get djs that use them purely for scratching and that turntable is fantastic straight tone arm or the s-bend arm can't be beaten they're all good but yeah. if you put a, you put someone in front of it that does long transitions and mixes for two minutes because it's techno or progressive music, then again, they're going to want something that's going to lock beats, stay locked, and they can then concentrate on the mixer, not on having to keep the turntable still and keep constantly having to fix problems with the pitch. So people like that, I would not recommend that to any of these turntables too. It always goes back to the Technics, either the Technics or the Denon. Right. <laughs> Do you have any opinion on any of the uh, three DJ turntables that Audio Technica released or had, right. you know, that's on the market? I think they have the one, the AT120, the AT140, which is yeah. an interesting turntable. I mean, it has a yeah. lot more dampening than a 120, but yeah. you can still hear the feedback if you tap on it. And then they have, I forget the other one. Is that the, the 1280 or something like that? The really I know one. there are three of them. And I've, yeah. watched, I've watched review videos on Now, yeah. I was, I was going to be getting a couple of them in to review. Now, okay. I don't go to the extent of contacting suppliers and asking them nicely. Because as you probably know from watching my videos, I'm as honest and as blunt to the point. <laughs> as you were real happened. honest with the MK7. You were like, this is crap right here. <laughs> he was, and I still stand by it. I mean, right. for somebody like myself that repairs and service and customizes turntables for yeah. a living, mm -hmm. you can imagine Panasonic ain't very happy with me. Yeah. But it's, I'm honest. I mean, people respect the fact that I'm honest and say what I feel. This is why my customers return, and why they come back, and why so many people want me to do the work. Because mm -hmm. I know what people want. I don't just sit there and say, you need this because it makes me profit. I'm not like that. I've right. said since day one, if I can pay my rent and I pay my rent where I am now, I've got a 500 square foot unit, which I do all my work with. I can pay my rent at home, pay my bills and do this. And you can save money. I'm happy. It's exactly. as simple as that. So no, the, um, it's difficult. The, the audio technique, um, going back to that, I know I, I can drift off a bit. The mm -hmm. 120, the original, when that was released, it was a very long time. The original was released a very, very long time ago. Yeah. Um, and they, I remember we had a firm here called Hard to Find Records. They used to be in Birmingham. They were pretty much the biggest DJ superstore in the UK. It was mm -hmm. the size of, we've got like Tesco's over here. You've got Walmart over here. Massive, yeah. massive over here. Um, which we wish we had over here. That would be, <laughs> we mm -hmm. haven't got that. So, um, yeah, huge. It was full of records downstairs in the big basement. And upstairs was just full of all the latest DJ equipment, production gear. Uh, you could go in there and sample records, take Spend it out. Spend hours in there. 
oh, you could spend a long time in there. And their address <laughs> was half of my records, and the name of their building was Vinyl House. So oh, okay. it, it awesome. And yeah, they they had that turntable for sale, and they used to market that in their brochure. We used to get paper copies before everything was all digital. And in the DJ magazine, for an example, because we used to get this all the time over here too, um, the non-European one was the DJ mag. And they used to have page spreads in the middle of the book and towards the end, which mm -hmm. used to have the Technics 1210 Mark II, the Mark V, the M3D. Mm -hmm. And then they had next to that the Audio Technica 120 with the Technics slip mat on it. Because it was obviously, they used to class it as a Technics clone. Because they mm -hmm. were one of the first people to do a turntable that really did look like a Technics turntable. Mm -hmm. And I suppose if you had them on your deck stand, unless you really knew what you were looking at, it's very hard to tell. Obviously, yeah. the buttons on them because of the adjustment for pitch and things, but it was a clone, basically. Yeah. So my opinion of the original, now I can tell you hand on heart here, I've repaired a lot of them in the past before I decided to just do Technics only. Oh, you mean um, the Audio Technica? You repaired a lot of those? 120, I had at one point, last, last year actually, last mm -hmm. year I had six in within the space of three months. All had audio problems. I had one of them that had... Um, a very had a bad motor problem, big bad motor issue on it. Um, there was a couple of shops locally that had goods that they had sold to customers mm -hmm. that they developed issues, but they were outside of the warranty. And as a goodwill gesture, they gave vouchers to the customers so they could buy something else in store mm -hmm. because they were going to buy something else and do them some money. And they were going to try and get an uplift back, basically back with the supply, in this case, Audio Technica. And they were outside of the period to do it. So they had all these turntables just sitting in boxes, brand new, basically, um, with faults. And they didn't know what to do with them. So I had them. I took them off of them. And I did the repair work. And some of them I couldn't repair at all. There were problems. With <laughs> but those are hand-pin turntables, though, right? Well, I don't know with Audio Technica. It's a difficult one with them. Because mm -hmm. every time I look at them, I think that's the same turntable. Now, I don't know what the newer ones are like now. This is why I want to get the um, get them in for a proper review. Right. If you're my honest opinion, I don't think that the 120 was a hand-pin turntable. If it is a hand-pin turntable, it's not using the same components as, okay. for example, the Pioneer right. mm -hmm. or the Relu. Because if that was the case when they brought out the original 120, mm -hmm. I think that probably would have outsold the Technics years ago. Was the was pitch the, digital still? Do you do you feel the pitch was digital or was it analog? No one's coming out with an analog pitch, right? They're all analog, but I okay. think the 120, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, I think the 120 was analog. I think it was analog. Because a lot of wow. people that I know were using the 120, never had any major problems with mixing. Mm -hmm. um, with the newer versions that have been released, they all are digital. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of their turntables now are su obviously Super OEM being mm. by hand um, wow. But until I get them here and I take them apart, as if I decide to get them here to take them apart, because obviously I have to buy the turntables myself. I buy them out of my own profit. Um, I get them here, I take them apart. And then what I tend to do is, unless I really like the turntable and decide I want to keep it here and modify it, do something to it, wrap them, uh, change components over. I usually put parts from Technics on just about everything. So tone arms, buttons, assemblies, all this sort of, all the good stuff. Um, unless I'm going to do that, I tend to just do my review on it, give my honest opinion, put the review on my social media, Facebook, website, etc. And then I stick it up for sale on my Facebook page at a reduced cost, slightly mm -hmm. reduced cost because I've used it. I've taken it apart so you can see it. It's all put back together. And sometimes when I do these, I don't even desold or anything i'll just take the lid off we'll look at the internals um you know and just go from there so i'll offer it at a reduced price so people can benefit from the item same as my denon my denon turntable's now up for sale on the one i did the review on um i love the turntable but then when i found that i'd be discontinued um and you can't get them at their slightly reduced cost anymore it doesn't seem economical to actually spend that amount of money on a turntable which there are a lot of faults with it. They didn't get it right, and there's a lot of things they should have fixed before they finally released it. It's almost like they got to a, a deadline or they ran out of budget. That's what yeah. I said on my previous video. So they've gone, we don't know what arm to put in this turntable. We're going to throw this arm in instead. You know, and that's exactly what they've done. Well, they've ran out of money and just thought, can't afford to design an arm now. They spent all the money doing the motor. We're not going to bother. 
that, 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 the, the denim was like, I mean, even when they released that, that was like a, a $900 turntable. Yeah, it's not cheap. Yeah, it's still 600 pounds over here. Yeah. yeah. The so, lovely looking turntable, the platter on it as well. I love it. I know you spoke about the platter a lot. You said like sometimes if you want to slow things down and you use the platter, you don't have to deal with the old style technique platter. That's going to have you actually seen the platter on them in person. I have, I have, I like the platter. Uh, The other thing is, you know, they, they did the whole like RGB light around the platter, you know, sort of like their other digital gear. I see where they were going. They were saying, Hey, you know what? We have a lot of digital gear, but we want this, analog not analog but analog turntable um so that people can you know spin dvs's or you know a dvs system or something like analog yeah. but yeah, yeah. The, it's so weird that they came out with it and you know two three years later like they discontinued it as well it's such a shame because i mean all they've done there is they released the new um what was it the 5000 sc5000 was it yeah. the sc5000 m that they released was, that, that's their pretty game dope stuff. i like that yeah, you can, mix pretty... more, you can mix more than one track on it. Yeah. And they, they tried doing that in the past with their older DNS series. And it, it was a bit of a flop. It was very too fiddly to use, whereas the newer versions now, mm-hmm. they are a game changer. I mean, mm-hmm. if, you've only, if you can only afford to buy one, that's all you need. I mean, it's really, really clever. But in reality, you could buy two of them. You can mix four tracks as yeah. far as it goes by that. So it opens up more possibilities, be able to mix more tracks together, even things like the display in the middle, where you can have your album art go in the middle of the display. That's never been done before. And it makes what Pioneer do, it makes them look stupid. It really does have all colour art. I mean, can you imagine what it's going to be like when you've got people like myself, but people who aren't just turntable orientated, the people that modify, I mean, really high-end electronics that can get into that and yeah. modify I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing people modify the display so you get things move around when it's turned around, give it the look that it's moving, um, playing games on it. You know, there's all different things that people are going to do if they really put their mind to it. But they just designed this, this new style of Prime series and decided we're going to have a turntable. And it's such a shame because everything in that range that they've done, their DNX mixer. Pretty sick, right? Like, it's, it's pretty dope. It's awesome. Their stuff is fantastic. The there is one thing stuff. that there is one thing Denon, uh, I, and this is why I thought Denon or N Music Brand was going to buy yeah. um, Pioneer. Pioneer because, you know, it, would, it just made sense to get rid of the brand, right? Buy it, then get rid of it. But um, they did everything right with the, uh, the Prime series. However, the engine, the prime engine software sucks. I <laughs> never mean, used it. Never used it. Yeah, it just it's, it's you know, it doesn't work as well as any of the other DJ softwares. It's just it, it's yeah. not great. But hey, listen. Um so I really want to thank you for letting me talk to you, having a turntable chat about techniques, about Love reloops, it. about denons, about stanton, and just to let everyone know that there are no 100% analog turntables in this game, period. No analog DJ turntables. They are some part of every turntable you've ever used is digital. Simple as that. So listen, if, uh, l- tell everyone how they can get in contact with you uh, in terms of your YouTube channel, you know, all yep. your social media platforms. Yep. Let it rip. Okay, so start with the website is probably the obvious thing first. So mm-hmm. well, the website was originally there for people that didn't have Facebook. It's not that way now. Everybody's on the website. Everybody's <laughs> booking on there. So you can actually book in on my website too. I had to create another website which mm-hmm. interlinks with my website right. so that you can actually book online. So the website is really easy. It's just techniques.co.uk, all in one word. You go on there, you can get all the pricing on there as well for wraps, everything that I do, LED kits, tone arms, all different things, all on there, every bit of information you need. Uh, YouTube, again, is youtube.com, I believe. Let's quickly have a look. I think it's youtube.com forward slash just techniques. If you type in techniques 1210 mark 7, you'll find me straight away. <laughs> right. There's not many people that have done videos on them like I've done like mm-hmm. that, so you'll find me straight away. But yeah, just techniques. And, YouTube.com forward slash Just Technics. 
Um, Facebook, which is the biggest platform on there, is about four and a half, five thousand people on my page. Um, you can go on there, you can look at the reviews. There's loads of videos. If you like this sort of thing, there's lots of me rambling on videos on your, on your Facebook, doing reviews, rants, uh, stripping things down, bodge job hunts. So if you like looking at me, finding problems that people have apparently repaired from other suppliers, um, I strip them down as well. So go on the Facebook page, which is again, facebook.com forward slash just techniques. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all the information you're going to need. Jay from Just Techniques, man. Listen, I really appreciate you uh, again, giving me the opportunity to chat with you, talking turntables, talking techniques. Just talking the whole thing up. Uh, listen, if ever you need, um, you know, you need another talking head or something like that, you know, just give me a ring. I'll be happy to uh, sit in and chat with you as well. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'll definitely remember that. I probably will. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Well, listen, you have a good day and um, okay. I'll see you um, in the uh, internet space. You definitely will. Yeah, I'll send you over an email as well. <laughs> All right, cool. Have a good one, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, bye.